विधिनमशिष्टान्न मंत्रहीनमदक्षिण श्रद्धा विरहित यज्ञ तामसम परिचक्षते the sacrifice done without faith or care shraddha virahitam yatnyam violating norms with no food offerings vidhihinam asrishta annam with no invocation nor giving of fees mantrahinam adakshinam is a yatnya that is regarded as tamasik tamasam parichakshate now the language is couched in the traditional yatnya language but we have to reinterpret it in the context the modern context of any act <coughs> so here is a, a description violating the traditional rituals of food offerings and giving of fees dakshina reflect a lack of understanding of the indispensable help and participation of all and as sri aurobindo puts it a wholly self regarding thing and a violation of the true universal law of solidarity and interchange so we remember we had a long discussion on what yatna is it's an acknowledgement that everything is related to everything else and we are mutually benefiting from this exchange and so everything should be done with that sense of sacredness piety care faith and following norms not violating norms i only suggested that not submitting an assignment is better than cheating now there are assignments where i allow cheating they are called tutorials where uh, you are supposed to help each other and do it they are called tutorials but in the exam or when a take home assignment where you are supposed to do it yourself th- so it depends on the context here let's say money is needed for some noble pursuit and guys will shell out only because they are too much rajasik they'll shell out only if they get something in return what's the least they want in return uh, well at least an acknowledgement that i'm giving i you know it should not be an invisible giving it's a visible giving where everybody and uh, you know we know that's what drives people will you do research and get papers published without your name in it nobody will do any research yes or no so we know that the rule the the, the constitution itself acknowledges that all karma is sakamya karma nishkamya karma is only in the gita in practice it's sakamya karma so i don't think we have any doubt about the status of our societies heavily tamasik rajasik yes or no you have to only look inside to this so in that society if you didn't have even this you won't get anything done so if you want money to come in flood victims or whatever there'll be a few satvik people who will be giving anyway but they are a minority they won't the numbers won't add up to the amounts you need to help right so <coughs> we uh, we welcome uh, rajasik offering and we write there there is nothing wrong we are not saying it's wrong so that's still considered noble but uh, if you are a student of the gita you will say first of all the money i am giving is not mine secondly i want to raise my own bar i don't want to stop at that level i want to give it authentically and i don't want anybody to know about it how many of you uh, would like to do that thanks man well uh, but we don't find fault with guys who don't they do it because they don't know anything better <laughs> you don't realize that you can lift the bar and there's a joy in lifting the bar actually you should lift it to the highest level that's possible and you can effortlessly jump over it but you have compassion for the world because you were also like that sometime back so you don't make fun of them or belittle them they have their contribution but cheating copying is adharmam you can't put it on the same level you understand 
you agree there is something r totally wrong here and there is something that is only Rajasik, we are not saying it is wrong, we are saying that it is selfish, self centered, yeah, you are seeking something and the whole world is operating like that. Okay. This is interesting, many people uh, do not understand the power of this verse, so let us listen to it first. Yajante Satvika Devan Yaksharakshansi Rajasaha Pretan Bhuta Ganashchanye Yajante Tamasa Janaha Satvik men offer sacrifices to the gods. See, broadly in the Gita, two categories are used Daivik and Asurik, the divine and the undivine. Sattvic aspire for the divine. Rajasik men, so Yajante Sattvika Devan, Rajasik men offer to spirits and demons. Yaksha Rakshansi Rajasa. Tamasik men offer sacrifices to ghosts. Yajante Tamasa Jana Pretan and to elemental spirits of darkness. Bhuta Ganan Cha Anye. So, all categories below this are said to be broadly undivine, but there is nothing wrong with them. They are also originated from the divine, they say even Lucifer was a fallen angel, but the standards are low and you appeal to a, a lower deity. Is it clear? Now, let us understand this little deeper. When it is stated that sattvic men offer sacrifices to the gods or devas, it is implied that the aspirations, the thoughts and deeds collectively the shraddha of such persons is directed towards and driven by sattva guna, that is the disha. This points to the domain of divine daivic powers which is the true meaning of gods here, that is how you should understand gods. Similarly, when it is stated that Rajasik men offer sacrifices to the Yakshas, spirits supposedly governing wealth and Rakshasas, powerful and evil demons, it is implied that the Shraddha appeals to and invokes consciously or unconsciously undivine Asuric forces which the Buddha described as Mara. See, Buddha also was very familiar with this. So, when you are cheating in the exam, the yatnya you are doing is actually an appeal to rakshasic powers and the rakshasa blesses you by not getting you caught while you cheat. You do not, when you cheat you do not think of the devas, whether you think or not you are appealing to the rakshasas, is it clear? Now it is understood, whether you do it consciously or unconsciously that is what you are doing. These powers are forever tempting our vital being, seeking to possess us and keep us entrapped in the lower nature by a predominance of Rajoguna. Finally, the offerings of tamasic men are said to appeal to the elemental forces of darkness, sometimes called Pishajas, which are described here as Pretas, hungry ghosts and Bhutaganas, hosts of spooky spirits. Although lacking the power of the Asuric forces of Rajas, they keep us bound to the nether world of ignorance by a predominance of tamoguna. You see, in the normal state where we can see only gross matter, you actually can't see that there are many levels of being actually operating in the same space. You need to have a tremendous level of wisdom to actually see these beings. These forces are visible. Buddha could actually see. He was tempted, you know, the, before he attained enlightenment. He could see it. Now you can't see it, but you can feel it. Someone asked Arul the other day the question: Are these the soul forces? And he said, No, they are different forces. Well, the Gita is very clear. They are asuric forces. You can't see them, but you can feel them. They are constantly appealing to you, waiting to entice you and we get easily enticed. The, the forces of, of prayers and shreyas are constantly appealing. Who wins? No, no, no. When you are vulnerable to prayers, who wins? 
So who wins? Yeah, so you are not really appealing to the devas. What is the what is the appeal to the deva? Something noble, something of a giving of a noble kind. You are actually wanting. You will find in these categories you are not giving, you are actually wanting. You are getting. You are pulling. So that is the difference. Here you are pulling towards yourself. You are deficient. You want to fill a vital need. What are you appealing to? You are appealing to the lower forces. Always. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think? Ah, uh, well, I leave it to you to decide. In the Philippines, I am told, someone who travelled there told me that, here we put one agarbatti and put some God's picture and light it. There, they are very blunt. They don't put any God's picture. They put a dollar bill and put the same agarbatti. Both are doing Lakshmi Puja. Yes or no? You are not interested in Mahalakshmi. You are interested in the money. Yes or no? What power are you appealing to? So, um, I mean, it's, uh, you have to see it clearly at that level. It is not the outer form that you are appealing to. You are actually appealing to these forms. Very clear. That is why understanding the gunas is very important. Outwardly, you may be saying, doing, practicing many things. But inwardly, what forces are you appealing to? There is an entire chapter on this. What is the nature of asuric forces? What is the nature of daivic forces? One is giving, one is noble, one is not self-centered. The other is totally self-centered and driven primarily by vital needs. Yes or no? In corruption, are you getting blessed or not? Of course you are getting blessed. All those crores of public uh, money that is filling your coffers, are you getting blessed or not? But who is blessing you? Ah, now you get it. But you might fool yourself and like to believe that this is all Lakshmi's blessing. That is left to you. Hmm? Who are you? You are the Dehi. In the Deha, your powers are infinite. Your access to knowledge is infinite. And you are settling for this low score. You are settling for this misidentity. You are settling for being forever in deficiency need. What a shame. That is all I am saying. It is not nothing right or wrong. You have to outgrow this. You are actually a multi-millionaire who thinks that you are a pauper. You understand? So, it is not easy to break out of that. Uh, Okay, that's that is the the rajas, right? so it is. Right goals, it is a rajasic. It's a rajasic approach. You said it correctly. Is rajas right or wrong? Yeah, so well, rajas is because of rajas only. You are studying at least. That's what you are saying. That's right. That's how. That's the whole purpose of rajas. At least that. Accidentally, you are learning something. It is the truth. Accidentally, we are learning something in IIT. Yes or no? Sheer accident. But there are a few people who came here to learn. They are not doing it accidentally. They are doing it consciously. Which do you want to belong to? Okay, Let us leave all that. Is there anything you aspire consciously? Not for these Rajasik reasons. Anything. What is that? Ah, Chumma you are saying. What is that? That is the nature of the Swabhava. The Swabhava is not covered by the Gunas. That is what you were born for. That is what you would do effortlessly. That is what you would do whether you get the grade or not. We are talking about that. 
when you've tasted that, you're in such high spirits and you've achieved such levels of skill that you will put that same skill to everything you do. Do you understand what I'm saying? Which means if you're a good student, the momentum of being a good student makes you curious about everything, including subjects that you may not like, including teachers who don't teach well. But your basic swabhava is to learn. And you have infinite capacities to learn. Do you understand what I am saying? It is a much superior way of learning. And you are never on the defensive. And if someone points that you don't know a thing, you will accept it gracefully. But you won't settle for this level of living. Do you understand what I am saying? This is a pretty low way of living. Don't you see it? Then the teacher also knows and says, Pow! So there are students who have not failed, have not passed a core course in IITs for last seven, eight years. One guy came to me and literally wept. So I asked him, what do you want to do in life? Because I know that my job is human resource development. I want him to discover his swabhava. What do you? He says, anything but civil engineering. <laughs> then you see how cruel. And I need this degree, this chap. That also is another rajasic thing. You you doing it because you want that seal. So I said, I'll help you. But more important to me is for you to discover what you want to do in life. I'll help you. But you still have to earn the minimum grade, no? Which means you have to do extra work, you have to do extra assignments. But I promise to help you. That's the least I can do. But you have to also give me a word. Never to practice <laughs> civil engineering. Because <laughs> it's dangerous if you start uh, building or constructing bridges. <laughs> you understand? It's like uh, you f your mother falls ill. You don't want her to be operated by uh, someone who studied like you. Yes or no? Now you understand? But the pity is, pity is, you if that job promises you a pension and it is, uh, the, you will take that job also then you are doing a disservice not only to yourself, to everybody around you. You will start giving the wrong medicine <laughs> and you might remove the wrong organ. <laughs> yes or no? Isn't that a crime? So you don't realize what you are capable of and what you are settling for. It is such a shame that we don't realize our potential. Don't you feel it? And you are happy with this chalta hai attitude and you are saying, Sir, it is not my, look around you, everybody is like that third rate. I am not happy with it. You may be. The pity is you have not found your swabhava and you are settling for very low standards. Gita aims at very high standards. Siddhir bhavati karmaja, the highest standards. Okay, so here is a summary. I, I do not have time to go through this, but you can go through it. Yet, yeah. Now we go to dana. तातव्यमिति यद्दानम् दीयते नुपकारिने देशे काले च पात्रे च तद्दानम् सात्विकम् स्मृतम् The gift given with pure and noble intention, दातव्यम् इति यद्दानम् simply given. Look at the language used. Simply given, regardless of any return favor. We do so much of calculation before giving and that too, should I give 10 rupees or 5 rupees or 100 rupees? Then you are confused and you regret later, I shouldn't have given 100 rupees, I should have given only 32.5 rupees. Simply given, regardless of any return fa favor, diyate anupakarine, to the right person, at the right time and place, deshe kale chapatrecha is dana which is said to be sattvic. Tat dhanam sattvikam smritam. Very important. No, this is the highest way of giving. All right. Dana refers to giving alms or any gift in charity as a donation. As a regular spiritual practice, it is intended to nurture a happy spirit of generosity, benevolence and abundance. It serves to purify and transform the mind and reduce the acquisitive vital impulses of the ego. So, it is a sign of 
abundance. What's the very minimum you can give the world to every person who is passing by? Very difficult. Yes or no? Why is it very difficult? Most people are so glum. Look at them. Why, why is it? Because we are sleeping, no? <laughs> we are so locked in our own deficiency needs. We can't experience that abundance. The people who are free, are liberated, they are happy. And you actually have time to look around you, look at the beauty of nature, look at the monkeys. And they actually look at look back at you. They are also curious. Look at the deer, look at people around you. And everybody can detect that quiet inner smile. It is an inner smile, not necessarily on your outer face. That is the radiance, that is the anta sukha that you can give, that is the greatest gift you can give to the world <laughs> and you are giving it freely, just like a flower gives out its radiance, its beauty, its fragrance indiscriminately to all without any calculation because that is its nature, that is its swabhava. How many people can do that? That is the very least you can do. Hmm? That's what we are talking about. Always pause and check. Is this the right time to give? Is this the right place to give? Is it the right person to give? Um, giving a smile is okay, but when you give something that that per that could be of use to that person, you have to be cautious. You don't give every beggar, every outstretched hand, what is in your purse. No, that would be wrong. There are many people there out there trying to fool you. There is an organized network of beggars, you know that. So, something inside you, when it is lit up, will know when it is not right to give. That is what we are talking about. It is sometimes not right to give. And that is why you will find, you may be surprised a sage gives, treats people differently. Three people come, but you may give something here, you may give something less here, you may not give anything here. Something inside guides you, because uh, giving should also be done with discrimination. But some things like generally wishing people well should be done indiscriminately. So, you must know there is discrimination involved in sattva. Do not do foolish things. Teacher should not indiscriminately give marks to students. You should not. See, teachers are not passing or failing students. Students are failing or passing. So, you must use your judgment. You must also see the larger context. And we are normally strict with good students. You do not give them full marks. Cut some marks there. But we are little generous with students like this, who are desperate for survival. So, there is discrimination, very important, cannot do it indiscriminately. But, right judgment and ideally that judgment should not be your intellectual judgment, it should come from your soul. That soul directs you when to give, how to give, how much to give. Dana refers to giving alms or any gift in charity. Okay, so, I have already said this. The sattvic way of giving as in all other acts is without expecting a fruit of action. The giving is done graciously, simply for goodwill and not an as an expression of a favor in return. Anupakarine, either returning a favor or gift received from someone, settling accounts so to say. Some people do that, they take a notebook and note. Yeah. Who is empowered to give? Who is empowered to give? He who is empowered to receive. And I have seen always that those who give also receive more to give. So, do not regret having put in the donation box or whatever, but you should equally respond to the one who has come to your house uh, to give whatever you can. Hmm? 
Here is a thumb rule I strongly recommend. If anyone sincerely any need comes to you with a stretched hand, give something, whatever you can afford and do not think too much, give because you are meant to give. You do not, you know that person who is coming to you would not come to you unless he was, he or she was in dire straits. So, you must give and you must give without thinking uh, when you know that and do not think your sources, resources are limited. That is the biggest foolish notion you can have. No, I, I know for sure my resources are infinite and I am only an instrument and uh, the money will come and the money will go. But uh, you know a Buddha only has to wish to get the money, do not even have to ask and the money will come. So, that is what you should train yourself to do and never regret once given. That is the biggest mistake we can make, especially into a hundi where you have no way. It is also going somewhere. Paying taxes is a way of giving. You might say, look, uh, it is going to some politicians pockets. It may well go there, but it is still a public. That is why Jesus says so rightly when he is asked his question, should we pay Caesar? And he says it beautifully. He says, give unto Caesar what is due to Caesar. Then he adds one line and give unto the Lord that which is due to the Lord. But there is no limit on giving. So, do not think you are, again poverty consciousness here. My resources are limited. I gave it all today. Now, I do not have anything left to give. There are plenty left to give. You know those stories, Akshaya Patram. Hmm? Oh, beautiful stories in the Gita itself. You know, who was that? Durvasa comes and he comes with his battalion and uh, you know the Pandavas are in exile and, uh, and uh, Draupadi is to cook for them and she has you know, hardly anything left, it is just a grain, but that is enough because her connection with Krishna was so strong that you know, there was a boundless, that is the Akshaya Pratram, you know, that Pratram has no bounds to it. You understand? That is how it is possible. So, there is no limit to giving. Yeah. Krishna is not talking at a local entity Duryodhana. Duryodhana ref represents a strong Asuric force with a huge background and backlog and a huge intention negative. So, it takes wisdom to recognize who is standing in front of you and that long term perspective is uh, everything goes into that act. You understand? So, it is difficult. So, Krishna whatever he does would, would have been perfect, but for ordinary mortals like us, you can take that seek that divine guidance before you pass judgment. So, decisions are very difficult to make here. You do not know who is someone knocks your door and wants something. That is where awakening the soul is so important. You get the, the larger perspective. You get that inner command, give and you give. Okay. Yeah. What if you donate with a good motive and the person who receives it misuses it? So, you had conditions when you gave. Then how can you, you know, how can you say that it has been misused? So, that is the burden. If you knew it in advance, you would not have given, right? So, you always give in good faith, but if you had this deeper insight, you would probably see it at the time and you would not give. That is what you, what you need to awaken. But once you have given, you have given in good faith at the best of your knowledge at that time. Do not worry about it. If it is misuse, it is misuse. Often it is misuse, is it not? Take it the simple generosity received from teachers and parents and so many. Is it not being misused by students, by young people? Yes or no? But parents do not uh, find fault with you because when they gave, they did not calculate and they gave the best they had to give. They did not. That is unconditional and they expected that you will put it to good use. But some people just gamble away and throw away everything. Some people use it for substance abuse. And parents would be horrified to know that is where the money is going. 
but it's happening. But karma phalam you'll have to bear, not them. Yeah. See, karna's key thing. See, both karna and bhishma got into trouble because they kept their word. You know, that's a difficult pledge to take. That means there's a rajas involved in that because you want to keep your word. You're not, you're not surrendering fully. There's an ego involved there. Whereas the final teaching of the Gita is sarva dharman parityajya, including your word, mame kam sharanam raja. So that's the highest pledge you can take. It's not keeping a word. You have to know which side you are uh, partnering. You are partnering the Asuric forces uh, and they have to be demolished. You also have, will have to be demolished. So everything is fair in love and war. He knew it. Yeah, but uh, are these the right things? When, Duryo, when Draupadi was being disrobed in front of the elders, was it right to sit and helplessly stand when you had powers to stop it? These are debatable issues. We won't get into that. We won't get into that. But he said, whoever is sitting on the chair, whether it's a demon or I will abide by what he says. To me, that's a little stupid. Uh, you shouldn't. You should be careful with the word you give. No. So who do you put at the highest? You should put Purushottam at the highest, not anything lower. Then you are in trouble. Okay, good. Good question you are asking. And they have been debated from time immemorial. Okay, so we are now into... Okay, so Satvik given is done freely, wholeheartedly and generously without hesitation or calculation. यत्तु प्रत्युपकारार्थम् फलमुद्दिश्यवापुनः दीयते च परिक्लिष्टम् तद्दानम् राजसंस्मृतम् But if the aim of the giving is to repay or hoping for a return favor in future or if the gift is given rather grudgingly such dana is regarded as being rajasik Very familiar to us, no? I mean grudgingly should I give? Should I not give? Should I give? Should I? Oh my God, I should not have given. <laughs> right? Yes, that happens. Okay, and you are calculating all the time. Will I get something back? Will he acknowledge me? Will he say good things about me? So, too much of uh, conditions in that, but that is typical Rajas. We will move. But if the aim of the giving is to repay yattu prati upakar artham or hoping for a return favor in future, phalam uddishya vapunaha, or if the gift is given rather grudgingly, diyate cha pariklishtam, such dana is regarded as being rajasik. Tat danam rajasam spratam. Okay. Such giving certainly has its value, just like the donation you talked about. Contributing to the spirit of exchange and interbeing. However, the motive behind it lacks the purity of sattva. That's all we are saying. Lacks the purity of sattva. Next one. Adeshakale yaddanam apatre bhyaschadiyate asatkritam avagnatam tattam asamudahitam. The gift given at a wrong place or time. Adeshe kale yaddanam or given to a recipient who is unworthy. Uh, disha, you gave it to a recipient who was unworthy, but too late. Sorry. But if you did it and you didn't care who you were giving it to, or you were just throwing it away, that's tamasi. A patre chadiyate. Given ungraciously or contemptuously. Sometimes we just fling it. Asat kritam avatnyatam is dana that is considered to be tamasik. Tat tamasam udahritam. The gift is not given with either a spirit of generosity or with a desire for exchange, but in a foolish and inconsiderate way and to someone unworthy. 
given ungraciously or contemptuously, it is likely to be ill received or despised by the recipient. So, recipient also will not uh, receive it well. He knows that you are throwing it at him. So, he will curse you and still take it because he needs it badly. So, sattvic giving is pure giving at the right place and time to the right recipient, one who does no favor in return. Rajasic giving is aimed at recompense or expectation of future reward or given grudgingly. And tamasic giving is done at the wrong place and time to someone unworthy with disrespect or perhaps with contempt. Now, let us just watch a small video. There are lo lovely videos on giving. Actually, the one I have is 18 minutes long, Nipun Mehta. But my wife sent this to me in WhatsApps and I said, this is a six minute one. Uh, it's uh, those of you who know Marathi will enjoy it better. Just let's watch it. Oh, sorry. Hello. It's not my birthday today. Yeah, it's tomorrow. Hello, Rana. So, tomorrow is open day. So, beta, but you get rid of this phone, ma. Okay, beta, which phone do you want? iPhone. Hmm. iPhone. But you are too young to have an iPhone. But, Papa, all my friends have an iPhone. Hey, but, beta, iPhone is not going to happen. You just have to wait for an iPhone. Dad, but I want an iPhone only. iPhone? Beta, I want an
So there's a lot you can learn from that video. You see that old lady who gave tea, hmm? did she expect anything in return? Her daughter who was teaching those kids, why was she teaching? So different kinds of giving that are possible. There's no limit to it, there's no bounds to it, there are no rules here, it's just sheer goodwill. And you know, on <coughs> especially birthday celebrations, this is the way a birthday should be celebrated. How many of us celebrate birthdays like this? And she learnt a lot and she uh, felt so much better. Often we think by giving you lose something, but by giving actually you gain much more. 